Good evening. This is Living Holistically. I am uh, Dr. Linda Kareem, and this is Dr. Jimmy Pratt. And we're very pleased to be with you today because it is said in the ancient text, come forth by day. And as a result, everything comes forth by day. All the flowers and trees, all the birds, all the creation comes out to meet the sun. Wow. It's so natural. The moment the sun dawns, everything comes to life. All the birds start singing. Mm. They start praising. Everybody wakes up. And every bird has a different song, a different melody. All of the animals come out and they scurry around because they say the early bird gets the worm. Because guess what? Worms <laughs> come up at a certain time. That's right. And if you want a worm, they bright eyes and bushy tail. Oh, you always say that because. You said about the squirrels and the squirrels be running around. Yeah, yeah but see, the person must have bright eyes, right. a bright brain, mm -hmm. an illuminated brain. Right. Because we are solar powered. You know what that means? That the sun, uh, that the sun shines. And it animates and, our... Right, we don't need no electricity. DNA, we, yeah. we don't need to be hooked up to some... Hooked into nothing. To anything. We don't need a blood transfusion. So we're plugged into Christ. We are plugged into the super Christ consciousness. That's right. And once you're plugged in, you have brain balance. Once you have brain balance, you can be able to be at peace with creation. And you can charge your own battery up. Oh, it's self-charging? Yeah. You can charge it up with your voice. You can charge yourself up with a thought. Mm -hmm. You can charge yourself up. Right. Yeah, all you need is a good thought. A good strong thought, a truthful thought. A truthful thought, you just wake yourself right on that. Yeah, today we're, we're talking about creation and our relationship uh, with the Creator <coughs> who has given us the executive privilege to create, direct, and produce as well. And we follow the patterns of creation. Like in the morning, you have dawn mm -hmm. at about 6, 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And then the, the energy wave starts to escalate. And it escalates up until about 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then from 9 o'clock, it goes, it peaks at 12. Right? Right. And then it gets very, very hot. And then between uh, 12 and 2, we're at an energy surge. Yeah, just because we eat lunch and we... No, lunch yeah. only means a bite. Okay. You know, it, it, energy, we are energy. We yeah. are pure energy. So we don't really have to have lunch. We don't have to have the food that we eat. So we can drink a bottle of water. Well, you can always drink water because in the water is electrical energy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the water is hydrogen and oxygen. Negative ions. And the negative ions. The healing part of the water. Of course. And so when when you have when you are aware of the power of water, then we know that in one drop of water is enough energy to generate energy for all electrical mm. uh, products <clears throat> worldwide. And one drop of water. Mm -hmm. 
in that drop of water are all kinds of uh, sacred geometry, mandalas, yantras, patterns for life. In fact, the, uh, there's an old African word called lefe. Lefe is the old word for water. So they say, oh, um, God will give you everlasting life. Yeah, but if you don't know what life means, life means water. And in the water is regenerative, cleansing, nutrition, power center, energy. So when um, the Jesus was washing the feet, kind of, sort of speak, the water, the tired feet was being healed by the water. Actually being energized. Energized. Mm -hmm. Because water is medicine. Medicine. So take two pills and let a glass, drink a glass of water and call me in the morning. It's a trick. <laughs> So the water is actually... It, the there. water is really, to a dehydrated person... Well, I'm sure this is not the first time uh, people have heard this, you know, water, drink the water, of course the water will do the healing. If you drink more water, if you get up and you're aching and you're in pain, and it means you're not drinking enough water, your body is begging for water. When the body begs for water... Right, so drink water. If you're sore, your body is sore, and you're in pain for some, I mean, drink water, and water will... Insulate the nerves. Right. And you'll feel better. Uh, you, if, you ha if you have a headache, and you don't realize that <clears throat> you have gone a couple of hours, you know, without drinking water... It's 95 degrees outside. Oh, no, it's 98.6 degrees inside. inside of you. If you have 98.6 degrees of energy right. in you, uh, then you're dissipating the energy. We are three quarters water. But to be fully hydrated, you have to drink more than 64 ounces of water a day. Because 64 ounces, his baseline is almost a desert. So how many ounces of water should have put? 91. 91. Is that uh, And if you weigh, if you weigh 200 pounds, right. then you weigh, then you drink half of your body weight. Okay. So if you're, if you're 200 pounds, you need to be drinking 100 ounces of water. And, 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 and this is really important because when you are drinking water, you feel optimistic, you feel joyous, you have good brain function, you have good nerve function, you, you're, uh, you have balance, you, you are cheerful and outgoing, nobody can get on your nerves. You know, you're radiant, you look better, especially water on the outside, too. Well, you feel better, too. You feel better, and, mm -hmm. and you smell better. Yeah. Now. With all that stale stuff on the inside comes out through your pores. Your pores. Well, you know, people have thousands of parasites oh, in their body. Yeah. That goes unchecked unmonitored and they're growing by the millions. They're having babies and hatching right in the physical body. But what happens is water is your alkaline substance that neutralizes toxicity in the body. And I think that if you're if you weigh two hundred and ten pounds you should be drinking hundred and five ounces of water because if you're not doing that, you don't have good kidney function. Mm. Have you noticed all of these dialysis places 
opening up. They're popping up I have everywhere. Never, I, mean, I have never seen as many dialysis places, primarily for people who have kidney mm -hmm. failure. Right. Mm -hmm. And kidney failure comes from not getting an A in water drinking. Not drinking enough water. Not drinking enough water. This is really basic. It's not science. This is. Well, so if your kidney doesn't have anything to do, it's not going to stop working. So if they stop working, if you don't feed it. Guess what it depends what on? Food, what is food for the kidney? Right. But what does it depend on? If your neighbor can't get out of bed, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And she calls you on the phone and says, good neighbor, can you lend me some energy? Will you go to the store for me? Because this person can't go to the store for themselves. Right? right? Mm -hmm. The organ that the kidneys depend on is the liver. So let me ask you a question. If your body can grow new organs, if it's getting the right proper attention, then why can you can it be revived your kidney or your liver or can any of that stuff grow back? It's not going to happen if you just pray in. You have to drink the water. Actually. So you pray and then drink the water. No, you need to drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pray. Well, can you? See, if I have a glass of water sitting right in front of me, and I look at the water and I say, you know, I want to thank you for all the things that you've done for me and I uh, appreciate you and I'm getting ready to drink you and I want you to take care of my body and pray for it and for good health and drink that water. I give you that. Okay. But 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 because would it make the water more powerful? It, only in your imagination. <laughs> water is mm a sophisticated chemical mm -hmm. designed by the creator himself. Right. And he put the water and the human being together. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he created the water next, or in what order. But the water was here before the human being got Absolutely. There. So he wanted to make sure that he had everything he needed before he hit this earth. Absolutely. Food, water. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The water is an absolute necessity because the, nothing on this planet could live without water. Right. Before you can even open your mouth to say a prayer. And it's, it's good to be religiously mm -hmm. correct. Right. But does a uh, cat pray before you drink water? I don't know. Some some things but, are uh, I would say some no. things are impressed upon the psyche of a person. Mm -hmm. You know, when when we're not talking about being spiritual. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about survival. Right. We're talking about living to see another day mm -hmm. and living in good health right. and energy. And and so there are some basic things that we need to do. So, you know, there's a lot of people walking around on crutches sick and really don't have to be sick. Because, and praying. And so you make yourself sick. How do you do that? Well, nobody is in your body but you. Right. So if you don't drink water, you're making yourself sick. Well, but who's giving you a headache? You <laughs> I'm not gonna give myself a headache. All right. So who gives you you diabetes? You give it to yourself if you don't. You. This is something that you. If you're eat. not eating the proper food and drinking water and take care of your body, God only gives you one. You only have one body. And it's designed. Whether you, whether you believe God gave it to you, you just happen to be here. You still only have one body. You, the body is the temple of the living God. Right. All right. Your body is a temple 
is the abode of God. This is where God lives. Right. Yeah. As you. Mm -hmm. Okay? God. And this abode is like many mansions. Mm -hmm. God created many mansions. And in it is everything. Right. So we have this holy water inside of us. Mm -hmm. And when we're born and conceived in our mother's womb, it would not be possible if water wasn't there to receive that egg and that sperm. So, before our prayer. Before, yes. So when a female is pregnant, they should make sure they are well hydrated at all times. At all times, so without can, uh, any excuse. Right. Um, because the fluid that the baby swims in gets very thick, mm -hmm. okay? It become hard to breathe. And the baby is hard to survive mm -hmm. in an environment mm -hmm. that is not conducive for the cells to duplicate themselves and for growth to take place. So it's really very important for all ages, really doesn't matter, from conception uh, until you, um, if we look at old age, we are looking at dehydration because a person stops drinking water. Right. And that could happen at 50. It could happen at 40. Mm -hmm. It could happen at 30 when a person is drinking you know, uh, ginger mm -hmm. ale instead of, <laughs> instead of water. But is water in yeah. ginger, ginger ale? Yeah, water is in ginger ale, but ginger is in it. Is ginger good? Yes, ginger is good, but the high fructose corn syrup in the water is a hybrid corn product that has the ability to adapt itself into any form that you put it in. You know, I was working outside um, painting a few years back, and I got to feeling so weak. I didn't know what was wrong with me, and I was like, oh, man. And I had a little bit more to go to complete my task. Um, but I couldn't get there. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I said, you know what? And one of the guys that was with me, he said, let's go eat. And we went and ate, and I drank some fluid, and instantly, my body just like that, it was back to normal. I was like, I needed something to drink, I needed water. Right. I needed water, and then I, know, I knew how it felt, what it felt like to not have water. So if you don't know what dehydration feel like, you don't wanna know. So you wanna make sure that you're conscious of um, how much water your intake. I mean, That's your primary goal. Yeah. I mean, any mother, that has a child that's dependent on them to get them a drink of water. Mm -hmm. It's a wonder that children survive because they're given other things to drink like juice, yeah. you know, that has a pH of 5.5 that will never give them the, uh, it will never quench the thirst that comes from being dehydrated. And you wonder why your child is sick. Oh, with a runny nose. Mm. Runny nose is oh, a signal that the immune system is challenged. It's been compromised. It's been compromised. And anytime you drink a soda, mm -hmm. that shuts down the immune system. It shuts down for eight hours. It stays like that for eight hours because the body is trying to figure out how to bring about homeostasis. That's his job, how to bring about brain balance. And there are millions of people who are working on just brain balance, trying to stay balanced, trying to stay alert, 
trying not to let their energy drop. They're doing a lot, a lot of things. So if the kidneys can't function as, as normal kidneys do to filter the bloodstream, because a lot of times people say, oh God, purify my heart. They should be praying, oh God, give me enough sense to drink some water so my kidneys can purify my bloodstream. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they say that um, the kidneys help actually help the other organs to function well. Right. But if the kidneys are not functioning well, then it will rely on the on its good neighbor, the liver. So it compromises the liver because the liver can't carry the load. kidneys. It can't carry the load. It's not even designed to do what the kidney does. And it will draw uh, water and moisture from every good neighbor. That means it's going to draw from the pancreas. It's going to draw from the spleen. It's going to draw from the small intestines. It's going to pull in uh, liquid moisture from wherever it can and it will definitely pull in energy from the colon and that's why people get constipated right they're getting constipated because the lack kidneys of, of water. the kidneys mm. are in an emergency state Whoa. you know so I don't know what it takes to explain to people the the basic things, you know. And I'm not, I'm not talking about purchasing water. Water is a is a, a billion dollar industry. Who would think that somebody would take some water and put it in a bottle? And sell, and sell it. And say it's purified. And say it's purified and when really... There's no better than the water coming out of the faucet. But then we're looking at um, water now. I mean, Richmond used to have uh, natural springs. Yeah. And uh, you know where they were? Mm, I know where a couple of them. One was in Bird Park. Yeah. Uh, one was near Virginia Union. Mm. Hmm? Yeah, it was one over south side in Forest Hill Park. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one that came out of the ground uh, over in the eastern part of uh, Richmond. I can't remember. Uh, there was one over at Young Spring mm -hmm. over on, on uh, Brook Road. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, who would think that um, someone would create a billion dollar industry and sell bottled water. And now we're looking at water that's in the faucet mm -hmm. that has so many drugs because it's a dumping ground for pharmaceutical companies that are here, yeah. uh, hospitals that are here, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, manufacturing products are here. And uh, water is being not being treated. Not the way it should be. Right. And I was thinking that um, the water that came out of the faucet was just as fresh as the water that they these companies were selling. But uh, they rented this water that they're selling through some filtration system in order to make it better, or they just. Uh, if you're living in a house of 50, 60 years old and, and, and your water's running through lead pipes. Yeah. Yeah, you got lead. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. And they take a shower in it. Yeah. And, and what happens when, what's that chemical they put in water? Fluoride? Chlorine. Chlorine. Fluoride. Fluoride. Uh, uh, by the time you take a shower, pesticides, all that stuff is. <laughs> by the time you take a shower mm -hmm. and you're feeling mm -hmm. 
in your mind. You're feeling good. You're feeling it's an illusion. Right. It's just your imagination that you're really, really clean. Because you've just been gassed. <laughs> and this gas, these fluorocarbons, you know what they do? Mm. They affect your memory. So whatever you got in the shower and you intended to do, right. by the time you get out, you've forgotten. You forgot all about it. <laughs> <And it's, laughs> <laughs> it's really not yeah, funny. I knew, I knew it was something. I just can't put my <laughs> put your finger put on my it. Finger on it. I was going to do something. Right. And the sodium laurate that's mm -hmm. in the soap, right. you know, is 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 a nerve gas, right? Uh -huh. And then by the time you finish all of that and you put deodorant under your arms, right. and it has aluminum in it, and the al aluminum was banned as a chemical mm -hmm. in 1934. In 1934, people were supposed to have stopped using it and producing it, covering their food with it, storing, uh, having parties, and having those aluminum trays. It is. So I guess the aluminum company had a lot of say so about that. Well, like that's right. Well, they self govern. Right. And it's still here. And it's still here. But, you know, once the facts have been presented, then you have to make an assessment based on uh, your level of intelligence. <laughs> once somebody has produced the facts for you, do you go back to sleep? Or do you awaken? Well, you, it depends on your will. I mean, if you want to, you can. If you don't, then you don't have to. But if it's going to do you good, then you should follow. What happens when, when we're talking about behavioral change mm -hmm. has never taken place on an intellectual level? You cannot intellectually stimulate somebody to do better. Mm -hmm. They have to have an experience. Right. You know, so you can tell them. Mm hmm. You can say I something. mean, I have friends that I talk to about white rice. Right. Until <laughs> I realized that they said, Linda Nanda, the rice is pure. Yeah, because it's white. And because it's white and it came from heaven. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and, and the angels formed the rice. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Linda Nanda. So, you know, it's, it's, wrapped up, it's wrapped up in illusion. Uh -huh. And when people aren't feeling well, they can't make a decision. So what color rice should we be eating? Black. Black rice. Or brown. Brown. Now, what's the difference in the nutrients of the... All your B vitamins are, are present. Right. You know. And the white rice has... It, it has a therapeutic um, value. If somebody is in a weakened state and they have diarrhea... And it's also true with white bread, white sugar. White bread, white sugar, white rice. White flour. Macaroni. Yeah. I'm not going to even talk about the cheese, but... Well, we used to take the white flour and make our kites. Uh, we, take, we would have newspapers. Um, that was the glue. Yeah, that was the glue. Before Elmer's yeah. was white flour and water. Right. And, we'd and in school kites. you would make paper. Yeah, hole. Yeah, it, it, it gets hard, yeah. too. It would be floating up 50 or 60 feet in the air. It's a uh, paper mache. And also, people were using that to make gravy. And they would put salt and pepper in it. Mm -hmm. And pretend, use their imagination. And they take the white bread. And, and sock, dip, and dip sock, it sock it. <laughs> and dip it up. I used to do it. But this is survival. I used to do that myself. So but this is survival eating. Right. 
you know. But I didn't know better. Right. And and when you know better, you should have enough strength right. to do better. But if you don't have enough strength, recognize that you need strength. Mm -hmm. And if you eat better, right. eventually... And you begin to feel better. You'll begin to feel better. You have better nerve function. Let me give you an example. A hummingbird. Mm -hmm. Its heart, nervous system, is so strong that it beats a thousand beats a minute. That's fast. And that's efficient. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to store any energy. We don't need to store energy. We have energy. But we bog the system down, a body that is designed to last forever. Designed to last forever, like Methuselah, lived to be 999 years old. And when he got ready to leave, he just say, oh, I just want to go. I just want to leave. I want to get a new body. So he didn't have to go. He just Well, Enoch, he merged with creation. Mm -hmm. So there was no dying. He was... he. The body was transmuted because it's energy. Right. This is not flesh and blood. Your body is not flesh and blood. It's energy in different forms. The, re the reason why we see each other is because a body is vibrating at the, the uh, uh, magnetic field of the optic nerve with 32 frames per second. Like a camera. Right. Mm. That's why you see somebody. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a part of us that you don't see and that's vibrating at a higher frequency. You can't see who's talking. Mm. I can't you, see what you're thinking either. Like you can't see who. <clears throat> unless you express it. Right. And so we're going to go over these uh, 42 laws of my art. And the reason why this is important is not to adopt the philosophy of ancient people. Because we don't know how they were thinking. No. We don't know that in what context they were thinking. Or what frame of reference they were using. But the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs has 2,500 letters. And here we have 26 letters. Yeah, so. Uh, so you do the math. Who's talking? Do you understand duck? <laughs> <laughs> Who is duck? <laughs> quack, quack. Quack, quack. Yeah. Okay, so... The, uh, in uh, the Egyptian book of uh, Coming Forth by Day and the chapter for uh, letting Ani's heart create opposition against him in the God's domain, we find a petitioner of Ma'at. Ma'at means truth and justice. Justice and truth before the scales of justice. We all have to go before our creator. So Anubis is the center of the scales and he has placed the petitioner's heart so his cop on one side of the scale and the other side is a feather of truth called shoe. Like shoe. Like shoe, like the healing sound for the liver. Right. Shoo. Shoo. And it heals the liver. That is a harmonizer for the liver to have increased liver function. But you have to repeat it over. And right. Over. And it is a therapeutic right. exercise. And so. So that's like a language that between you and your liver. And that's, a, that's the language of the internal organs. Right. 
So in the uh, chapter for not letting the heart create opposition against God, that it's not really smart to go against or to interfere with God's creative powers or processes because you are a part of that creation. Right. So the 10 uh, laws, mosaic laws that they say that Moses went and got mm -hmm. from the ancient Egyptian priests in uh, Mount Sinai, what they call Sinai yeah. Yeah. or Sinai, yeah. Sinai. Yeah. those laws are important because it helps to create an environment inside your own self where you're not in, in opposition against your God self. I mean, who would fight God? Who would think that they can go against God's law and think that there would be no side effects? So usually the side effects is madness. Are you, are you thinking about a person who has gone mad, mm -hmm. right? Right. Because they're in opposition with God. With God. And you see it yeah. on television every day. Every single day. Every single day. In opposition. And this is a great teacher. Because who would oppose God? Who has omnipotent energy? A crazy person. Right. So, it's done. <laughs> so, here we go. I'm going to read 10. And then these are just suggestions. There's 42 laws. There's 42 principles of, of, of justice, truth and justice. I have not committed sin. That means I have not wavered. I have not committed robbery with violence. I have not stolen. I have not slain men or women. I have not stolen food. I have not swindled offerings. I have not stolen from God. I have not told lies. I have not carried away food. These are important not for external philosophical piety. This is a, a relationship that you have within your own heart. You're checking your heart to see if your heart is right, if you're going to do the right thing, if you're not going to exploit people, right in their face exploit them, right. even though they don't even know that you're exploiting them. How could you do that and think you're going to get away? Okay, so here, you read 10. Okay, you already done 10, so I'll do the next one. Uh, I have not closed my ears to truth. Right, you're listening. I have not committed adultery or adultery. I have not made anyone cry. I have not felt sorrow without reason. I have not assaulted anyone. I am not deceitful. I have not stolen anyone's land. I have not been an eavesdropper. I have not falsely accused anyone. I have not been angry without reasons. Okay. And, and this isn't philosophical. This is physics. This is how do you live to be a, a, a Methuselah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have not been angry without reason. Why would something, I guess you'd have to be crazy. Agitated. Yeah, to be angry. And you don't have a reason to be angry. I have not seduced anyone's husband. I have not polluted myself. I have not terrorized anyone. I have not disobeyed the law. 
I have not been exclusively angry. I have not cursed God. I have not behaved with violence. I have not caused disruption of peace. I have not acted hastily without thought. I have not overstepped my boundaries of concern. Wow. My turn. I have not exaggerated my words when speaking. I have not worked evil. I have not used evil thoughts, words, or deeds. I have not polluted the water. I have not spoken angrily or arrogantly. I have not cursed anyone in thought, words, or deeds. I have not placed myself on a pedestal. I have not stolen without belong what belongs to God, God's deeds, Goddess. I have not stolen from or disrespected the deceased. I have not taken food from a child. I have not acted with insolence. I have not destroyed property belonging to God, Goddess. So this isn't a philosophy that we can just sit back and chat about it. This is a, a meditation contemplation mm. of checking yourself before someone else checks you. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to be corrected. But we could correct ourselves in the privacy of our own home or at work, you know, or in public, where you check yourself against these ancestral suggestions. So for billions of years, the life force has been transmitted from one generation to another, both male and female. Your mother has both male and female children. And for billions of years, the life force has been coming through the mother into the creating a family for billions of years. And this life force runs like a river. And the current of life is so strong, why would you be in opposition to it? And so these suggestions come with a petition that we follow the pathway of life to increase the life and to bless generations to come so if you follow these laws it, and in, it's, life, in life. Right, it's yeah. natural. Yeah, it's, it should be natural. Right, and then you have the basis of community living. Right. You're not exploiting anyone and, and people are able to uh, cooperate with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't have to bring up laws of, on the state of Virginia. There are 6,000 laws on the book, thou shall not spit, mm -hmm. thou shall not jaywalk, right? right? Mm -hmm. Thou shall wear decent clothes. I mean, some of these laws should be erased off the book. Well, it was, it's, it was a very meager effort mm -hmm. to generate money. Right. But when, you, when you're going by a moral code of ethics, you're not preaching morality. You're not bending somebody's ear about doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone should ha have a set of this contemplation. And, it, and it's really, there, there are lots of books that have it. And then that will be your guiding light so that you can change yourself. Because 
only God in you can change you. God gave you free will so you can be any way you want. Any way you want, any way you want, say what you want, do what you want. But you have to stay within the guidelines in order to be. Right, and and, and sometimes you don't know though what those guidelines are. And if you um, don't know them, then you know. You, it's like drinking that water. You know, if you don't know that, that you need water, your body needs water, then you do thirst. <laughs> you get thirsty and you feel bad. Yeah, some people drink beer right. because they're thirsty. So if you say something that's not in alignment with the law against someone, and you know you're wrong. Well, you, you know, know let's look at it this way. The original name for law is love. Mm. <laughs> so... When a person has love, mm -hmm. right? Right. They have self respect. Mm -hmm. They won't harm anybody. They won't steal from anybody. Because they have this love. Now, if we spell the word law backwards, what do we have? <laughs> hmm? What? It's the L A W W A L. What is it? I don't know what is it, a wall. A wall <laughs> between you and people. Wall, put a wall up. You're putting a wall up. You're isolating yourself. You're separate. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not like that. We belong to a family. Right. So you don't want to put a wall up. You want to be... In the family. It's like... Um, Reagan said, uh, go for Trump, tear that wall down, and the wall came down. And when that wall came down, people started getting along with each other. Because there were families on both sides of the wall. Oh, right, and it's the same thing with North Korea and China. They got family in on, Korea, North Korea that's right. China. That's right. And, and all these borders, it's like, well, why are these borders here? And well, they're artificial borders. Yeah, so, okay, well, I'm Chinese, I'm North Korean. But they're all the same. Well, yeah, because if you know anything about Chinese genetics, the Han people mm -hmm. is just one family. And the Han people are all in Russia, all parts of Asia, all the way down, Korea and Japan, right. Philippines, Vietnam, is one people. Now, in Russia, let's go to Russia. I mean, you know, you got the Hans. Mm -hmm. over there. How come you never see them? Because they don't have a TV station. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm wrong. Yeah, if they had their own TV station. And then, you know, there's news that is censored. So the news that we get is a um, money-making mechanism. And it really does not, it's not a truth teller. Fake news. Well, I wouldn't call it that. It's business. Yeah. Because if you want to know what the business is about, then you look at the ads and see who's paying for it. But they have to keep it interesting. And it really has to be stimulating. Yeah. So good news does not sell products. Right? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Uh, it could if you're not feeling well and if you have pimples, bumps, um, sores, scabs, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The good news is that we have something for you. We got something for you, even though it don't work. <laughs> we got something for you. <laughs> We're good. Bad bath wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't but, hurt. Yeah, it's a good bath and you can get rid of just about anything. You scrub your skin. Right, or, or, or drink some and water, drink some water. And a shower is not a bath. Yeah, um, a shower is a wash up. It's a wash up. <laughs> we used to call it a wash up when you got the pan. You know, you get your little wash pan back in the day. It's, you know, and you just wash up, wash your face, under your arm, you know, and your vital areas that, you know, that. 
a track swim. So, but you did go to the, did you play in the pond or the river or the lake? All of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we played in the pond, we played in the river, and we also had the lake. Mm-hmm. And, and probably played for hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those kind of things of uh, using water as your friend and making sure that uh, you hydrate yourself on the inside, which is half of your body weight is what you should be drinking and get in that water and relax. And so as you do that and you will experience uh, feeling better. Mm -hmm. You can wash away aches and pains. And you don't have to get that bubble bath, you know. Just put some Epsom salts in the water. Because the Epsom salts is good for your nervous system. Our biggest concern is stress. Stress. You know. And when you're able to address stress at the point of before it starts mm -hmm. you know then you're drinking enough water and as you drink enough water then you become hydrated mm -hmm. and you feel better so when you feel better you think better much better and you're uh, less uh, threatening right you know and you feel good and you feel good, mm -hmm. and then your aura changes. Right. Hmm? Your skin looks better. Oh, it does. When you drink, when you work, you you hydrated. Mm -hmm. Everything is just... And when you're like, talking about... It's like a pretty flower with all the... In the, in the oh, that's a great name. Yeah, like a beautiful flower when the flower is in full bloom. That's a metaphor. Yeah. Now, if the water is in, if the flower's in the water, mm -hmm. it lives. It lives. And it might root. <laughs> Come back to life. Mm hmm Yeah, that's what water does. So, uh, I hope that uh, this discussion uh, has helped you, and you can, as a family member, as a friend, as an associate, you know, with somebody who's a, a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, or uncle, co-worker, make sure you give them a gift of water. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you put the flower in the, uh, in the water, the stem, and if it stays there long enough and you change the water, just, just like you do yourself, the fresh water, and the roots will actually start forming again. Mm -hmm. And you can plant and guess what? You got another one. A plant. Yeah, another plant. So you can imagine mm -hmm. what water would do to you internally. Oh yeah, because you're drinking the water. The root system mm -hmm. of the uh, plant is the brain. Right. And so the brain is under the ground, mm -hmm. or is the one that sucks up the nutrients right. and bring it in. So why not give yourself the gift of water every two hours and put yourself on a schedule and one way to check whether or not uh, you're hydrated is that if your urine is orange or if it is yellow mm -hmm. that's a critical sign of dehydration so you should drink enough water until it clears up. Until when you are urinating in the bowl, in the toilet bowl, it has maybe a half a gallon of water in it. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the water is in the tank. Right. But if you're diluting that water, even if it's pale yellow, right. it still tinges and colors that water. So it's deeper than the color that you So see. it's much deeper. Or scant urine. That means the kidneys, is the renals, they're not producing enough urine. Mm -hmm. And so that would be another signal 
to drink more water. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got a uh, couple of subjects met. All right. All right, so. We talked about my aunt. We talked and, about a lot about the water. A lot about the water. Mm -hmm. And see, Ma is the ancient Egyptian word for water. Mm. Say, I want my mama. Mm -hmm. Mama mm -hmm. is an old name for water. Water. Mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your mama is water. Water. Mm -hmm. So mama. Maybe that's what a baby is asking for. <laughs> when they're asking well, you to say mama. The, the, the baby seems to say thing. daddy first. Yeah, so what that mean? Oh, big power. Big power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When they say mama, they mean give me. They saying give me some water. And daddy is mean big power, greatest, the greatest power. Mm -hmm. So we learned a little Chinese, little Arabic, and a little wisdom. And we thank you, and we'll see you next week. Love you. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings.